Hello everyone. So today we have a test uh, for rheumatology. Okay, the first question, which of the following is the least typical feature of polymyalgia rheumatica? The answer to this question is elevated creatine kinase. In fact, creatine kinase is a muscle enzyme. And it is raised in condition like polymyositis. It is not raised in polymyalgia rheumatica. Let's learn more about basic concept about polymyalgia rheumatica. Then you will uh, definitely able to understand better why it is not the answer, why others are the feature of polymyalgia rheumatica. So basic concepts. Well, as far as polymyalgia rheumatica is concerned, it's a very common condition seen in the older people. This is very, very important point. So, now in, in this patient also, there is no mention about age, right? So, this, any, of course, it's the direct question, but if the question is asked you regarding, and they give a age, and that age should be more than 50 years. Suppose that they say a 30 year old, then it is not the case of polymyalgia rheumatica. It is such an important point noticing. So this is the key word that you got to remember in this particular slide. And number two, what the characteristic feature is the muscle stiffness point to be noted, right? Stiffness of the muscle is much more. This again a very commonly asked question. Stiff pain may or may not be there point to be noted very carefully. Pain may or may not be there. It is stiffness which is the troubling to the elderly people. And inflammatory markers are raised. That means in this condition raised ESR. It's a very commonly asked question. So in fact, it is the, now the question is, the, is, suppose right now an elderly person, 60 year gentleman comes and sits in front of you, stiffness on the limbs, mainly in the pelvic and the shoulder girdle. Then the next, uh, the, then he's going to ask you, what is the next step? Answer is go for ESR. It's the next line of management is raised ESR is, will strongly indicate that you are dealing with dealing with polymyalgia rheumatica. And it is very closely related to te temporal arthritis, but is also known as giant, giant cell arthritis. Giant cell arthritis. Okay, often they are associated with each other. So friend, in this particular slide, the key word to remember are older people, muscle stiffness, race, ESR, and temporal arthritis. So there are four keywords that you got to remember in this particular slide. Now, what are the features? As I told you, is a elderly people, 60 year, and it is usually of rapid onset. This is again a very important point. This one point, it differentiates from the age-related problem. Of course, elderly people do have stiffness, but that never start within one month. That will long history for many months or years. This is an extra point, rapid onset. And one more thing, it is usually involved the proximal limb muscles. That means mainly stiffness, as I told you, in the pelvic and the shoulder joints. Pelvic and the shoulder muscles. Okay. Weakness is not a feature. Point to be noted. Muscle weakness is not there, but stiff is there. Right. He can very well use his limb, but due to stiffness, the movement is limited, but he can use his, there is no muscle weakness. In addition to that, patient may have generalized pain, lethargy, depression, low-grade fever, anorexia, night sweats. There are additional features which can be there. Okay, but they are non-specific, they can occur. I guess, right? So, how to investigate? Race ESR is a feature. As I mentioned, you is more than 40. 
but otherwise it may be more than 100 also. The, but raise ESR is the next line of investigation when you are making a diagnosis of polymyelia rheumatica. Note, creatinine kinase and EMG are normal. They are, uh, they are abnormal only when the muscle disease like dermatopolymyositis is there. But in this case, it is, it is there all normal. So in the question also, there was an option that which is the normal, creatinine kinase is normal. Treatment, you have to give steroids, okay? They respond very well. They respond very well. And if that they do, if they do not respond, then perhaps your diagnosis is wrong and you should go for alternative diagnosis. So I hope you are clear about why the answer of the question was A. Question number two. We have a 48-year-old Asian lady she go to general practitioner with fever, fatigue, night sweat. On examination, absent limb pulses. ESR is raised. And there's mild anemia also. Symptom improve after a course of steroids. And blood weather is most likely to affect it is aorta. Why this is the answer? Why she improved? What is the diagnosis in this case? She is a case of Takayashu disease. She is a young Asian lady having asymmetrical pulse or absent of a pulse with raised ESR and the symptom improve after a course of steroid. That indicates the disease is perhaps related to vasculitis. Okay. So let's learn about uh, that Takayashu disease. So this is Takayashu arthritis. What is the disease? It is a obliterative arthritis. Point to me notice. That's why in this case pulse is absent. Okay. And the primary site of disease is aorta. In the main side where the disease is involved, right? So, ultimately, when the Oka disease started, and we know all the branches, subclavian artery, they start from, they are the branches of aorta. So, that's why it is a it kind of large weather vasculitis because why? Aorta is getting involved, which is a, which is a large weather vasculitis. Other example of large weather vasculitis is the giant cell arthritis giant cell arthritis which we have studied in the previous question. They are the two large fetal vasculitis. Okay. So the classical feature in Takaya issue is large fetal vasculitis, aorta and lead and that lead to absent limb pulses. What more? Remember, remember in Burja disease also, the artery of hand and feet are involved, but that there is a long history of smoking is there. Long history of smoking is there and patient may even have gangrene also. Gangrene also. Typically, Burja disease is only for the chronic smoker who has smoked there for last 20 years. Regarding inf other option, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, they, they, when they are blocked, they, they hamper the venous return. They do not belong to the arterial system. So when they are inferior vena cava or superior vena cava, they will be obstructed. Pulse will be normal. Pulse will be normal. A renal artery is a medium size a a vessel. Medium size. Of course, renal artery stenosis can occur in Takayashu disease. Takayashu disease. But renal artery stenosis will not lead to the problem of the absent pulse. So now you go back to the go back to the question again. So we are getting a patient. Okay. In the question, no way they talked about smoking ruled out. And as I told you, these are these these two will not lead to these two will not be lead to uh, lead to 
uh, absent pulse and renal artery stenosis will also will not lead to the absent pulse. So you are convinced that the answer is Takai issue arteries. Let's now, having ruled out all the options, let's read more about basic concept about Takai issue arteritis, basic concept. It is a large vessel vasculitis, the point I mentioned in the previous slide also, with giant cell arteritis. And it causes occlusion of aorta and thereby limb, uh, absent limb pulse, especially in the upper limb. Okay, rather it can be asymmetrical pulse on two arms. That means when we are, you are palpating the two are radial, radial artery together, they are, the pulse are not coming together. There may be even BP difference in the two arm. BP difference in the two arms can be there. Okay. Typically young ladies, Asian ladies, features, as I told you, there, there can be systemic feature of vasculite like malaise, headache, low grade fever. They are the generalized feature that we can, see, we can see in any type of vasculitis. Point to be noted, low-grade fever. Any patient of vasculitis can come to you with pyrexia of unknown origin. It is important DD, any, any vasculitis, not in particular Takai issue. Always investigate for vasculitis also in case of fever of unknown origin. Unequal BP in the, uh, in the, in the upper limb, as I mentioned to you, including palpation also, carotid brew can be there. That means you keep a stethoscope over the carotid, you can hear a, you, will, you can hear a murmur. Intermittent claudication, it may involve when the leg of blood vessels are involved. The intermittent claudication, that means patient has a pain on walking. Pain on walking. That can be there, but not a very important feature, but can occur. In, similarly, even aortic regurgitation can be there in 20% because it is the because the aorta is involved, so AR can be there. So, friends, out of the, in this slide, what are the key words that you should never forget? It is the Asian ladies, unequal BP in the upper limb. And they can be aorta and apps. That's all. These are the three keywords that you should not forget in this particular slide. Or you can say in Taka issue arteritis, don't forget these three pulse. Okay. So renal artistosis may be a feature, the point I mentioned to you. Treatment you give steroid, a course of steroid, plus, of course, plus a plus treatment of hypertension also. For these patients, they usually come to us with hypertension to treat for hypertension also. Now, golden line to remember, a young Asian lady with asymmetrical radial pulse, asymmetrical radial pulse, And BP difference in two arms. This is Takayashi. Okay, the golden line Takayashi art right. If you this, get this thing straight forward, this one line will cover entire Takayashi art right. It's a young Asian lady. Asymmetrical radial pulse with BP difference in the two arms is Takaiju arteritis. Okay, now let me tell you a here only I must add other important condition where we have a asymmetrical radial pulse and the BP difference is aortic dissection or dissection of aorta. But it usually come as a severe pain chest. 
इन एमरजेंसी रूम सीवियर पेन चेस इन एमरजेंसी रूम दे काम ओके दे डोंट कम टू ओपीडी सीवियर डिस्ट्रक्शन और ऑर्टा ओके एंड मोर ओवर दैट यूजली पेशेंट यूजली दे आर एल्डरली पीपल एंड हाइपर टेंशन इज देयर हाइपर टेंशन इज देयर इन टका इश्यू आल्सो बट डोंट फॉरगेट टका इश्यू विल कम टू योर ओपीडी एंड दिस पेशेंट विल कम टू द एमरजेंसी दे कैन दे हैव सीवियर पेन एंड दैट कैन रप्चर आल्सो so now we come to question number 3 a 38 year old lady shortness of breath and for the last 5 days pain chest on exertion is there generalized aching temperature is there bp and uh, the radial pulse on the right side is absent as oxygen saturation 95 what the most likely diagnosis or the main key word in this by which you can think something that you are getting radial pulse is absent this is the most important line and that it's and the young lady she 38 year lady she has come to you so the answer is takayashu arthritis this is what i want to the emphasize if you remember the golden line golden line you use and you got the answer takai issue she did now this question 38 year lady with absent radial pulse takai issue art that is straight forward question can it be other option dissection first of all dissection usually has a acute presentation not the way that this lady has presented moreover in type D, b dissection the the problem lies below below the origin of the subclavian artery okay so i let me show you like this this is the type b so here we are getting dissection of aorta here so it will not involve the a subclavian artery so in this type of dissection radial pulse will be normal radial pulse will be normal so that rules out otherwise also if they have usually they have a acute presentation but this definitely they say type b ka uh, this is surely ruled out not a an answer what else acute myocarditis it can lead to congestive heart failure it will not lead to absent of the pulse okay it and due to congestive heart failure there can be dyspnea dyspnea can be there similarly community acquired pneumonitis it can lead to dyspnea but it will not lead to absent of the pulse peripheral arterial embolism it will lead to problem in the peripheral artery it will not lead to dyspnea it will not lead to dyspnea but taka ishu arthritis is the disease which simplify and that is absent of the radial pulse and patient may have associated coronary arthritis by which she may have pain and the and the and the uh, and the and the dyspnea on exertion and of course the strongly asian lady with absent of the absent radial pulse this is seen classically in case of taka issue arthritis question number 4 intravenous immunoglobulin is given in which we give in kawasaki disease okay most likely to be benefited in kawasaki let's read about other options graves of thalamoplegy we don't give immunoglobulins inclusion my by myositis in this in other condition we don't give intravenous or there are better options are available but in kawasaki disease the only treatment available is intravenous immunoglobulin that's why it's the best answer remember the examiner always say choose the most appropriate answer okay so let's read more about kawasaki disease Kawasaki disease is a child, uh, disease of children below five years. 
This is a very, very important point. Remember, age is very important in any case of vasculitis. Remember, in giant cell arthritis, it was above 50 years. So patients usually come to you with fever, skin rash, and there can be conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis. But it is so often asked question, conjunctivitis. It is a non-purulent. Is a non-purulent. Non-purulent conjunctivitis. Patient can have lymph node are enlarged, spleen enlarged, and liver enlarged. So that's why, and of course, patient has skin rashes there. Skin rashes there. So that's why we also call this disease to be muco cutaneous lymph node syndrome. Muco cutaneous lymph node syndrome. And in this, one of the Classical feature of this is coronary arthritis, coronary aneurysm. So aneurysm, aneurysm dilatation are seen in, uh, in this coronary arthritis and that can lead to myocardial infarction in a child below 5 years. Normally, coronary artery disease or MI is a disease of the elderly person, but here we are, we are getting a child of four years getting myocardial infarction. In fact, it is the most common acquired disease, acquired heart disease in children. And treatment is intravenous immunoglobulin. Okay? So, there are all the basic concept of our Kawasaki disease. Which of the following is least recognized feature of polyarthritis nodosa? The C and K antibodies. Okay, C and K antibodies are not seen. Or at the most they can be seen in 20%. Now here I like to remove your doubt. Uh, uh, most of the time when you read, they write C and K antibody absent, C and K antibody absent written in almost all the literature. But as per NICE guidelines, they, they if you read the literature about NICE guidelines, they say they can be there in around 20%. Okay. 20% only. So why I'm, of course, I could have said it very clearly, it is absent. But it's my duty to inform you, the literature of NICE, they do say 20% can happen. But hypertension, yes, it's an important feature. Mononeuritis multiplex is a very, very important feature of polyarthritis nodosa. And pyrexia is a feature of all types of vasculitis. And in this, renal failure is a feature. Okay, but C and K antibody, out of all these, it is not there or it is there only in 20% cases. So let's read more about polyarthritis nodosa, more basic concept. First of all, it is a medium vessel vasculitis, point to be noted. Point to be noted, the previous two what we studied were, they were all, uh, especially Takai Ashu and Giant Shell, they were large vessel vasculitis. And it lead to aneurysm formation. This is the one of the most important clue. If they talk about coronary aneurysm in a child, 100% you are dealing with Kawasaki disease. But if you are getting aneurysm in an elderly person, you think about polyarthritis nodosa. It's a, such an important golden line to remember. In fact, it is a diagnostic clue also. It's more in middle-aged men and associated with hepatitis B. This again is 30% cases it may be associated with hepatitis B. The clinical applied is that whenever you are making a diagnosis of polyarthritis nodosa, you should always do the serology. Serology to rule out hepatitis B and C also. Sometimes even hepatitis C may be there. So it's a mandatory that when you diagnose pan, you should do serology of hepatitis B and C. Can't afford to forget. They are the three, one, 
and two they are the two most important thing which are associated with polyartetinodosa in this particular slide other feature fever weight loss arthralgia non specific weight loss hypertension this is important feature mononeuritis multiplex the point i mentioned to you very important testicular pain libido reticularis renal failure renal failure so all the options were uh, whatever here they are given in the options also and point to be noted in this patient they even can have gangrene formation especially in the upper limbs finger gangrene formation is a very important feature of of polyartetinodosa and pnk antibodies ka okay pnk antibodies the option or they may be seen around 20% cases and b and ka hepat b serology is 30% i told you so keyword are 1 2 3 4 and 5 and of course 6 there are six keywords that you have to remember in this particular slide okay and of course pnk is absent or only in 20% this is libido reticularis okay and this is like you are getting a skin rash and this is also seen in therapy by amantadine तो लिबेडो लिबेडो रेटिकुलर है दिस लिबेडो लिबेडो रेटिकुलर इस ओके एंड दिस इस सीन ऑफ कोर्स इन पेन और एस वेल एस व्हेन वी ट्रीट ए पार्किंसन पेशन विद अमेंटेडिन लिबेडो रेटिकुलर इस अ वेल लोन साइड इफेक्ट नाउ लुक इनटू दिस ब्यूटीफुल Aneurysm are we can see plenty of aneurysm are there, plenty of aneurysm are there. That is one of the diagnostic clue for polyarthritis nodosa. So you are clear about it. Question number six: fifty-four, fifty-four-year-old male, abdominal pain and testicular pain, weight loss, and they may diagnose the polyarthritis nodosa. Antibody screen. So, so. Which antibody you can see in this patient? Okay, first, which antibody? This is seen in which condition? See, anti-CCP antibody seen in rheumatoid arthritis. It is not a feature of pain. Positive rheumatoid factor is seen in many condition, but of course, rheumatoid arthritis is one of the most important. But definitely, and it can be seen in many other condition also. Like this, may be there in SLE, Jogren. Systemic sclerosis, but it is definitely not seen in polyarthritis nodosa. Anti-RNP antibody is again seen in SLE. Anti-Smith in SLE. The best answer this will be no antibody likely to be positive among all these. In fact, bearing the toka, bearing as I told you, twenty percent cases. PNK antibody. None of the other antibodies present here, and this is done clinically plus aneurysm on angiography. So write down pan is one of the diagnostic clue is aneurysm on angiography. is one of the clue by which we can diagnose polyarthritis nodosa plus hepatitis b serology these two thing you don't have to forget if you are getting this this is the golden line to remember if you are getting this you are dealing with polyarthritis nodosa question number 7 we are getting a 35 year old He has asthma, epilepsy also, and now he come to you with hemoptysis with worsening of asthma. Point to be noted: uh, he has asthma. Normally, hemoptysis is not a feature of asthma, 
but now he is getting asthma also worsening and hemoptysis the additional finding we are getting is oh he has got eosinophilia and positive PNK antibodies okay drug which can lead to this is Monte Lucas is the answer it's a beautiful question so let's learn more about Monte Lucas and other drugs none of the other drug uh, can lead to this problem okay so let's talk about let's talk about what is happening in this patient we now this Monte Lucas this drug it is a leukotriene receptor antagonist point to be noted that we are well aware leukotriene uh, Monte Lucas is a leukotriene receptor antagonist and one of the important side effects of this is they can lead to, they can trigger, they can trigger eosinophilic granulometers with polyangiitis, so called Chuck Stoss syndrome. First of all, let me tell you the previous name of the disease was Chuck Stoss syndrome. But now the new thing, as per NICE guideline, the new name is eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Okay, so there's a new name is there. So we have a polyangiitis, eosinophilic, the name itself suggests that there will be eosinophilia and there will be granulomatous lesion. And one of the trigger factor is Monte Lucas. Okay, so, so this patient I told you is perhaps due to Monte Lucas and patient has developed Chuck Stoss disease, which is an important feature of Chuck Stoss disease is asthma and eosinophilia. So that's why in this patient, although Monte Lucas is used as a preventive drug for asthma, but now it is inducing more asthma. So anti, so the golden line to remember is anti-asthmatic drug anti-asthematic drug causing asthma causing asthma if this line comes you are dealing with Monte Lucas anti-asthematic drug causing asthma the golden line to remember Monte Lucas is the answer or leukotriene is separate antagonist okay so extra point more knowledge basic concept so the Chuck Stoss disease the new name is eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis the EGPA they call as okay it is, it has PNK antibodies, positive. Right? Asthma is the feature, I told you. Eosinophilia more than 10%. In the peripheral film, paranasal sinusitis. That means there is involvement of upper respiratory tract also. Mononeuritis multiplex. This we saw in case of pain also. In fact, pain is the most important cause, vasculitis cause of mononeuritis multiplex. And Chuck's toss, this is the second most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex in among the vasculitis disease. PNK is positive in 60% cases. Point to be noted in PAN, it was there only in 20% cases, right? So the key word are asthma, eosinophilia, mononeuritis multiplex and PNK antibodies. Now let me give you a lovely comparative chart. We have a Chuck Stoss syndrome which is eosinophilic. We also have a vaginus granulomatosis. The new name of vaginal is granulomatous with polyangiitis. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis is the new name of vaginus. So both have a, the common feature is granulomatosis. 
तो लेट अस सी व्हाट आर कॉमन बिटवीन द टू वेस्कुलाइटिस सनसाइटिस एंड डिस्निया दिस इज कॉमन इन बोथ दिस कंडीशन ओके न्यूमेनिक इज वी एस डी वी इज फॉर वेस्कुलाइटिस एस फॉर सनसाइटिस एंड डी फॉर डिस्निया This is common between both चर्क स्टॉज एज वेल एज वेजनस सिंपल न्यूमेनिक वी एस डी नाउ इन चर्क स्टॉज वट इज सीन एस्थमा पी एंका एंड ईओसिनोफीलिया ओके राइट द न्यूमेनिक इज पी पी एंका ई फॉर ईओसिनोफीलिया एंड ए फॉर एस्थमा वेरी सिंपल सब्जेक्ट इज गेटिंग मोर एंड मोर सिंप्लीफाइड बट हेयर वॉट वी गेट इज in granulomatosis we get renal failure epistaxis or hemoptysis or cnk antibody is there right so out of all the single most important is cnk if you get cnk anywhere 100% you are dealing with vaginas so remember cnk it means you are dealing with vaginas subject simplify to one word entire vaginal is one word c n k vaginals right oh so friends beautiful summary a quick recap in case of common between uh, two uh, polyangiitis whether it is eosinophilic or granulomatosis both are polyangiitis the that the chuck stoz is eosinophilic po polyangiitis and this is the vagina is the granulomatous polyangiitis the common is vsd vasculitis sinusitis and dyspnea and case of chuck stoz p p and k asthma and eosinophilia here we get c and k with hemoptysis okay because in vaginas there is upper respiratory tract involvement lower respiratory tract involvement and renal involvement okay that was what we see in vaginas so we are getting a again 41 year old asthma weakness in the left hand ulnar palsy eosinophilia it is chuck stoz but what is extra thing we are getting in this question we are getting asthma okay eosinophilia okay but what we are getting is nerve palsy why the nerve palsy this is due to mono neuritis multiplex right so remember here what we are getting is so we are getting asthma we are getting increase eosinophil and certain nerve involvement this is chuck stoz okay right so friend asthma eosinophilia and any nerve involvement is is chuck stoz disease golden line to remember asthma eosinophilia and involvement of any nerve that is that is you are dealing with chuck stoz disease understood to so in chuck stoz disease what antibody we get is pnk antibody ANA we get in SLE, anti-SCL70 you get in scleroderma. Anti-phospholipid antibody series we get in APLA syndrome, and CNK in vaginas. So by rule out technique also we can very comfortably say that. pnk so we directly also we know and by rule out technique also we have we see that this is seen in in chuck stoz disease well simple questions now pnk antibody are strongly associated with chuck stoz in polyartritis nodo now come now why i added this question pnk is there in 20% cases of Poly and here it is sixty percent. This is only idea of for was putting this question, so no confusion. He is the question says strongly associated. So definitely sixty percent is stronger than the twenty percent. 
in in vagueness you get c anka not the p anka in auto in, in immune hepatitis uh, these antibodies are not there and good posture also we don't have these antibodies so you understand the meaning of strongly associated is chuck straws question 10 you are getting a patient of hemoptysis with chronic cough and what we are getting is if you look into the options okay it shows blood what we are getting is we the answer of this question is we are getting a patient with hemoptysis chronic cough and kidney is involved and uh, and creatinine value and the urea value they are increase and of course there is hematuria is there what is the answer beautiful question answer it good posture syndrome why not others let's see one by one esr is normal age the patient look into the again patient age is 29 only and esr is 11 only these two are strongly against against other diagnosis will go one by one but as of now <clears throat> point in favor is young age and the normal esr good posture now let's first read about good posture syndrome what, what is anti gbm antibody the previous name was good posture now they call anti glomerular basement membrane antibody so called anti gbm antibody disease okay well it is a type of small vessel vasculitis and it lead to both pulmonary hemorrhage and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis so that's why the 29 year old patient coming to with renal involvement and the cuff also right and the, okay, now next point question from pathology we we talked about anti gbm antibody they are against but they are the antibody are against collagen 4 this is a very commonly asked question can't afford to forget this question from pathology so antibodies are against the collagen 4 okay more in men by modal age distribution 20 to 30 year and 60 to 70 year and HLA DR2 very very important point so now if I have to tell you what all you have to remember in this particular slide, this one condition which can lead to both pulmonary as well as pulmonary hemorrhage and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis because it lead to a type of RPGN. RPGN is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And patient lands up in chronic renal failure very fast. That's why in this condition, creatine and urea both are raised. But ESR is normal, which is usually in case in other condition. And one more question from pathology: the antibodies are against the base collagen four, and by modal distribution and HLA DR four. So these are the four points you got to remember in this particular slide. Well, more about good posture syndrome, pulmonary hemorrhage, I told, rapidly progressive renal failure, the point I told, and it lead to acute, it give, give rise to acute onset. This is very important. Kidney involvement may occur in vaginas, but they never land up with acute renal failure. This is one condition which usually lands up with acute renal failure. Nephritis, that's why they have protein urea and hematuria. Of course, with acute renal shutdown also. All these are good posture syndrome. If you do the biopsy, you get linear IgG deposit. 
again a very important question and and uh, the diffusion capacity is usually in key because of pulmonary hemorrhage anything hemorrhage in the uh, in in the in the alveoli the diffusion dlco is increased diffusion capacity in the lungs is increased because of blood is there and that facilitate the diffusion so this point i this point i mentioned in the previous slide but in this this is the single most important point linear igg deposition the classical feature that we get in good pasture syndrome management is plasma exchange plasma is urgently required to remove the antibodies steroid and cyclophosphamide are given as a immunosuppressive drugs now one more thing L now main complication is pulmonary hemorrhage whenever the patient come to you they will have blood in the sputum and that they come as a hemoptysis so when the patient is coming with hemoptysis then the possibility other possibility which are much more common is tuberculosis pneumonia so in the young man these are more possibility but in an elderly man coming to you then you have to think about lung cancer and of course in around middle age you can think about vagueness also okay so what it did was that what are the factors which are further going to increase the problem of hemorrhage yeah, smoking definitely smoking lead to so many problems in the lung that can cause hemoptysis low respiratory tract infection pneumonias i just mentioned can lead to hemoptysis pulmonary edema can lead to hemoptysis but that is so called pink for this sputum pink for this sputum it is a medical emergency patient will have a severe dyspnea he will not come to the opd he will come to the emergency room inhalation of hydrocarbon is uncommon but can lead to hemoptysis and young males is the likely that i told you a good patch is a disease of the young people not of the elderly people it can occur but usually that they come it has a bimodal presentation but young male is again a predisposing for the good pasture syndrome question 11 47 year chronic sinusitis shortness of breath and we are getting esr 92 urea 20 creatine 198 and urine dipstick blood is there it is granulometer with polyangiitis point to be noted here the esr is 92 in the previous question the only problem point was that in that in that case esr was normal to so raise esr is a feature of good past uh, is not a feature of good past is a feature of granulomatous polyangiitis point to be noted if you look into the question formation of this and the previous almost everything is same but mrcp people are very smart they really want their basic concepts are clear or not so one clue what they give us esr so don't forget the word esr esr normal it good pasture esr race is vagueness both can have same presentation to write down the golden line to remember esr esr normal good pasture syndrome and esr increase this indicate vagueness golden line to remember simple simple clue are good enough to crack the question okay so friends we are getting sinusitis shortness of breath raise esr 
Well, when we talk about granulomatous with polyangiitis, it's nothing but vaginas. Vaginas is a triad of upper respiratory tract involvement, lower respiratory tract involvement, and lung involvement, and renal involvement. Okay, upper respiratory tract, sinusitis. Sinusitis. Low respiratory tract is hemoptysis and the kidney involvement is the renal involvement and but which you are getting hematuria. Urea created in key that indicate renal failure. Okay. So in other conditions, in other conditions, stuck ka in mixed cryoglobinemia, this is seen in hepatitis C. 90% cases is due to hepatitis C. They always have a different type of presentation. Chuck stores come as a asthma. We have read just now. Hemolytic urine syndrome is a disease of the children. And these two are the disease of children. Pediatric age group. They are usually not seen in the elderly person. So age wise also we rule out. Okay. And hinoxinolic purpura, they have a palpable purpura in the skin. And they don't come with the uh, hemoptysis and they don't come with the sinusitis. Question number 12. You, you are getting a 25 year hematuria, fever, vomiting, fatigue, creatinine is 342 rays, cuff, small amount of blood, nosebleed, earache, most likely diagnosis is, is vaginous. Why? They have a upper respiratory tract involvement in the form of earache, nosebleed. They are upper respiratory tract involvement. Blood in the cusputum is low respiratory tract involvement is there. Creatinine is raised that indicates renal involvement is there. So they have all the three criteria which fit into granulometers with polyangiitis. What about pneumonias? Pneumonias will not have renal involvement. It's not a feature. SLE is the one thing which is a close, close uh, competition to give. But this is more in female and they have a skin rashes there. Okay. And moreover, sinusitis is not the feature of sinus involvement or ear ache or upper respiratory tract is not a feature of SLE. Good posture, we discussed that is altogether a different presentation, not like this thing. Chuck stores is asthma. So by and large in this patient, we are more likely to have a good posture, so called kilometers with polyangiitis. Bichette syndrome. least associated conjunctivitis. Let's learn more about Bichette syndrome. So friend, oral ulcer, gentle and anterioritis, these three, they are the classical feature of Bichette syndrome. Okay. As far as Bichette syndrome is concerned, is a type of vasculitis. And now the golden gold medal question is this. It's the only vasculitis which involves all the blood vessel, all types of blood vessel. Golden line to remember. Only vasculitis which can involve large artery, medium arteries, small arteries venules, capillaries, veins, everything. There is no other vasculitis. Uh, gold medal question is this. And the patient has recurrent oral ulcer as a major criteria. There are major and minor criteria. This is a major criteria, recurrent oral ulcer. Recurrent genital ulcer is a minor criteria. 
deep vein thrombosis and aseptic meningitis they are all the well known association of bichat ocular involvement is there in the form of uveitis and now come another gold medal question uveitis is seen in so many conditions like ankylosing spondylitis also here also but it's the only condition where we have pan uveitis pan uveitis means both anterior and posterior so only condition having pan uveitis is bichat syndrome conjunctivitis is seen but it's very uncommon as compared to uveitis which is a much more important and in addition to this akaika uh, they can be retinal retina involvement uh, iris and chorioretinitis practically every blood vessel is has been involved why it is a is is a one disease which which involve all types of blood vessels are there so conjunctivitis out of all the eye lesion that means major eye or structure are cornea iris and retina it is involving conjunctiva is not a very prominent feature okay so now it is more common in eastern mediterranean turkey so if you are getting a patient from turkey you are dealing with with a turkey with a recurrent oral ulcer and genital ulcer golden line to remember so a patient with recurrent oral genital ulcer from turkey you are dealing with bichat syndrome cannot golden line to remember three word oral genital turkey okay to numenic is if i have tell you numenic genital oral and turkey got got is bichat syndrome subject entire bichat syndrome is squeeze in one word got g o t genital oral from turkey is bichat syndrome and in these cases classical question hla b51 young patient 20 to 40 year hla b2051 is important and patient may have positive family history additional point so two additional point in this picture slide r actually b51 in positive family history but in your exam if you know this 99.9% you will be able to solve the answer by just remembering got that's all okay so the classical feature is oral ulcer genital and anterior uveitis thrombophlebitis deep and superficial both point to be noted very carefully thrombophlebitis arthritis can be there what is special thing about arthritis it is non erosive it's a non erosive arthritis that means there is no joint deformities joint deformity is not a feature aseptic meningitis is a feature and patient can even have erythema nodosum point to be noted okay the erythema nodosum can be feature so friends thrombophlebitis aseptic meningitis erythema nodosum are the extra point that you should remember in a patient of bichat syndrome and in this case in this case positive pathology test this is again a very very important point that you got to remember positive pathology test what is this let's learn the basic of positive pathology test well suppose this is your arm you just give a scratch okay nothing will happen but in this patient even slightest of scratch will produce intense inflammation in the arm 
and this is so called positive pathology test so what i told you in this got plus you can add it positive pathology test got with positive pathology test is b shed syndrome okay b shed syndrome and don't forget they have a hla b51 which is a split antigen of hla b5 sometimes they write hla hla b5 or sometimes they write as a hla b51 51 is a better because it is made from the 5 it is a specifically seen in b shed syndrome so b shed syndrome is got pathology and hla b51 b shed is got positive pathology and hla b51 the whole b shed is squeezed into this got positive pathology and hla b51 question 14 now 521 year lady painful genital ulcer recurrent attack uh, attack oral uh, and oral ulcer are there okay she had acyclovate thrombophlebitis right the answer is b shed syndrome in polyatatendoza oral ulcer are not the feature sle the oral ulcer are there but the, but in this case in thrombophlebitis is not a feature sarcoidosis doesn't have oral ulcer they have what they have a bilateral parotid enlargement and they have a hyalur adenopathy herpes simplex they don't come with they don't come with thrombophlebitis thrombophlebitis is not a feature of herpes simplex question 15 you are getting a boy 12 year old boy that means we are dealing with some pediatric problem purpuric rash on the extensor aspect of the lower leg abdominal pain and articular rash the he has hematuria most likely to be seen well we are getting a child with skin with hematuria with skin rash we are dealing with hinoc schnolin purpura in hinoxonal purpura they have a palpable purpura okay and they are associated with iga nephropathy due to iga nephropathy they have a hematuria and due to ika due to this ka hipka and due to same reason they have a mesangial hypercellularity is a classical feature that we see in iga nephropathy linear igg deposition this is seen in good posture syndrome no change this we see in minimal change glonified spectrum if you see under light microscopy sclerosis this we see in sle and basement membrane thickening this we see in membranous this we see in membranous so by rule out technique also we have seen that this is in the mesangial hypercellularity is seen in ig is seen in henoxinol in purpura so let us read something more about henoxinol in purpura basic concept so it is a iga mediated small vessel vasculitis point to be noted okay so it resembles like iga nephropathy 
and seen in children usually after an infection. This is important line. Within one to two days of infection, the child may come with hematuria. Point we noted that in case of acute post-steptococcal glomerulonephritis, also the child may come with hematuria with sore throat, but that occur after two to three weeks. Here it is one to two days only. So that mother will bring the child to you that two days back he had a sore throat. Today morning I saw the red color of urine. Then you are dealing with IgA nephropathy. In fact, uh, IgA nephropathy is the, is the most common cause of recurrent hematuria in children in the world. IgA nephropathy or Henoxnolin purpura or IgA nephropathy, whatever you want to say, is the commonest cause of recurrent hematuria in children in the world. So you get palpable purpura is the classical. Whenever you get a term palpable purpura, 99% you are dealing with henoxlonin more in the extensor aspect. Abdominal pain is a feature. Polyarthritis, even joint pains are there. And patient has renal failure, hematuria. All these are basic concept about so-called henoxnolin purpura. So the key word to be remember here are IgA mediated small vessel vasculitis. Patient may have IgA nephropathy. Children after infection, palpable purpura, recurrent abdominal pain, polyarthritis. These are the points that you have to remember in this particular slide. This you can see, buttock and the leg area, you are getting palpable purpura. Treatment is, you have to give supported treatment. Steroids and immunosuppressive are not very effective. Point to be noted, they are not, especially in IgN they are not, they are given, but not as good as what we use in various other types of, like giving immunoglobulin in Kawasaki is almost curative, but here is not so. And as far as condition is concerned, majority of time they respond very well, it is self-limiting, and but one third patient can have relapse. So by and large, when we talk about prognosis, so its treatment is more of a symptomatic treatment. No specific treatment, Steroids are not very effective, they, and fortunately, it is a self-limiting condition, but relapse can happen in one-third cases. Finally, least likely to be seen in henoxnolin, abdominal pain, it is seen. Renal failure, seen. It is a IgA, nephropathy, polyarthritis, seen. Purpuric rash is seen. Thrombocytopenia is not a feature. Write down. So in Henoxnolin purpura, platelet, P for platelet count is normal. Complement level. is normal. Even that there is no complement, even complement uh, level is normal and the platelet count is also normal in this patient. So out of all this, th thrombocytopenia is not a feature of henoxnolin purpura. Thank you very much. God bless all of you.